Welcome to Notes, a podcast about music and the arts, where we discuss with professional musicians how they make a living, uh, so you get some insider tricks of the trade. In this episode, I shall be talking to a friend of mine who is an architect and musician, Mike Kilgore, about um, how we set up Blues Camp and just general sort of ideas about running something like a summer school. So without further ado, I'll get into the conversation. Okay. Hello, Michael. Hello, Victor. Right. How are you? We can start. Yeah. Okay. So we had a little bit of a preamble. Now we've yep. sorted the echo out and everything. That's right. And so, any feedback? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so today I thought it would be quite interesting for people that um, who listen to this um, to get a perspective of something that's not not just purely from a musical perspective, because obviously the, the interviews sure. I've sort of done up to now have been guitarists and drummers and, and what have you, that's been sort of really focused on on what they've done, you know, with their sort of playing and stuff. Mm. But of course, um, my interest really is is a sort of a broader perspective, looking at um, music just purely as a as a business or a you know as a sort of a creative business. And of course, you're you, you, you're sort of straddling two camps really, because obviously you're an architect mm. and you run your own architect's practice and have for a long time. But also you're involved in um, musical projects because you do the Blues Camp project with me. Yeah, sure. Um, and there's one of the weaknesses I think that a lot of um, artists have is this finding it very difficult to separate the, the sort of the hobby, the thing that got them interested in doing what they do, yeah. and the actual business side of things. And I thought this is something we could sort of talk about today which i think would be valuable for people well people are too um quick to give away their expertise yeah because it's creative and it happens in most creative industries that our society doesn't value creativity in the same way as they value people who make money on the stock exchange or people that go into court they just think because you're creative that you know, you should give that expertise you've got away, and of course, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. You should value. You should value that. And once <laughs> you start valuing that, people value what you give them. So I'm quite interested in sort of in that. You know, why is it that we've arrived at that? Is it because we're something like, you know, like for instance, the stock exchange? I mean. For, you know, people dealing with currencies and stuff like that. It seems to be things that you that other people don't understand, and there is a you know you've got a chance to make money out of it. Is that do you think the reason why that they they don't have a problem with being able to charge a lot of money? Yeah, that's exactly right. Because it's intangible to most people, they don't understand how the mechanisms work. Therefore, it's a black art. Therefore, it's got to be very clever. Therefore, if I want to make you one million, you've got to pay me a hundred thousand pounds for doing it. Yeah, it's that that there's there's inherent in human nature that there's a jealousy and a greed thing also takes part in that thing. Yeah, and that that's a no that's one of that's a fundamental human trait that you know people instinctively are greedy or they're jealous of someone else doing it which doesn't happen on the creative side, it doesn't happen so much because people think they can design buildings, people think they're singers, people think that, therefore it's an easy thing to do, it's tangible, they can see it and I think that's the, that, that's one of the problems in our Western society, perhaps in other, other cultures it doesn't exist in the same way, um, but I think that that tends to happen to exist in our culture. Mm. 
Do you think? Yeah. Do you think there's an element also of jealousy in this that it's almost like, well, that's not like a proper job? Oh yeah, it's never seen as a proper job. And because yeah. of that, it's almost like, well, you shouldn't really be charging anything for it because it's almost like it's a gift. Yes. Yes. Because I, I'm the... very, I'm, I'm very interested personally in, <clears throat> in what the um, alternative therapy um, business world does with this because mm. um, it seems in a quirky sort of way very similar to the world of um, of things like learning to play a musical instrument. I know that sounds really weird, but the but the, the criteria that I've always used is it you know it's open to people that have got a bit of money spare. No. And it's also open to people who want to sort of improve their lives in some way. Um, it's not a necessity to do, you know, alternative therapy. Um, because if you're really strapped for cash and you're really desperate to be fixed, often people will go down the, you know, the sort of obvious uh, medical route first. Mm. Um, but if you've got the money spare and you want to make your life a little bit better without it being a lifesaver, that's where people will often go. And it's a little bit similar to why, you know, somebody wants to learn to play the guitar or Jimmy, you know, little Jimmy wants to it learn is, to yeah. So it's open to sort of a similar thing. And I think that they face a lot of the similar problems. Um, a, yeah. and, I, and I have sort of seen that where somebody who does... Um, something like aromatherapy massage or something mm. like that. Um, it's almost like people expect a little bit of something for nothing. Um, you know, and and a lot of people undersell themselves or they'll go and work for a, a bigger company that charge a lot of money, but they don't get an awful lot for the time that they're there working, which is quite common, you know. Mm. Um so maybe there's an element of that. So, with regard to like what you what you've done with architecture, tell me tell me a little bit about how you you sort of set up your own business and you know how what you did before. Did you work for somebody else? And yeah, I've, I've, I've worked for a couple of companies, and um, most most architectural firms or any creative firm have. Have, usually have some form of philosophy of how they approach things. Um, not to say it's, it's, it's very good or very bad. I, I just came to the conclusion that I wasn't happy necessarily working for somebody else mm. and it, that I couldn't put forward my ideas all the way I want to practice. So I actually started up in the middle of a recession. Good place to start, on, actually. On the, ba on the basis that if you make something work in a recession, you can make it work any time. <laughs> yeah, which is it's sort of slightly counterintuitive, but it actually does make sense because I've, I've always thought that, that was, that's a true situation. It, it is true because you, you only learn by things going wrong sometimes. Mm. And if you start on the top of a wave, if you haven't experienced what it's like when it dips, mm. and it surely will, mm. always, in a, in a capitalist society. Will always do that, and if you're unprepared for it, like a lot of firms were. I mean, in, in a couple of the recessions, they were they were sort of hiring huge leases on buildings in London at the top of the rates. Then suddenly, when it crashed, they didn't have any anything to work on. Whereas if you start in a recession, you you value it more in a way. You value what you do. So by starting in a creative business on your own, you're all the mistakes are yours, if you see what I mean. What you do and what you see is what you get. So you've got in a company, you know, you may be forced down a road to do something, and when it goes doesn't quite go right, you become the scapegoat, even though you thought it was wrong in the first place. So you learn fairly quickly, and you learn about people fairly quickly. You learn how to man manage fairly quick. Because what they don't teach you is how to talk to people when you're at university or college or anything else. They teach you how to do the job. But what they don't teach you about is any interaction or any how, how you relate to people. And that, that really, in any creative business like architecture or things like that, is, and music, is one of the biggest things. How do you relate to the person you're delivering to? 
because it's not a stock, it's not a pound coin, it's not a computer, it's not a Bitcoin or anything like that. It's you know, it's not a paperclip. I've sold you this. You can go now. You're selling yourself. So, and every, every, every time, and you can be the best architect in the world. But if you don't get on with your client, for one reason or another, and we can't get on with everybody, it's not going to work. However good you are, it's not going to work. You, it, doesn't, it doesn't mesh together. And I actually say that all the time to clients, not necessarily corporate clients who know exactly where they're going, but to domestic, what are called domestic clients, is that I can do the job for you, I understand what you want. But if we don't have a connection or we don't get on, I'm not the right guy for you and you might not be the right client for me. And that often shocks people. And they go, we don't understand that. And when you explain why, they get it. Um, creative people get it more than someone who's a banker in the city. They, they, they can't relate to that sort of ideal, really. Well, either you can do it or you don't. No, it's not quite like that. So it's making that initial connection. If you get that initial connection, it it works. It works because you 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 you're both going down the same road. You're not fighting each other. And it, I suppose it's the same playing in a band. You've you you as as you know, you you've got to have the right the right blend of people. What you don't want is five prima donnas in a band. No. You need people that have got different experts and people that listen. Yeah. And people that so the, the the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, mm. and that's what you I think that's what you always aim for and be prepared to listen. And if you can do that in a creative field, I think that's that's why work. That's why so I think so many architects play a musical instrument. I think because they're on that sort of wavelength anyway. Mm. And we were talking about therapy, and you know, any business is quite high pressured. It's easy in our Western society, go to a doctor, give me a pill, make me better, which is not the answer. Mm. And as we know from before, I don't come in many years. I've been, I've been doing this, uh, I've been doing this with you playing, but certainly, certainly it's one of the best therapies you can have mm. because it, it takes part, another part of your brain takes it's another part of your mind it's a it's a soothing part of your mind that soothes the other part mm. you release chemical when you're when you're dealing with music or dealing with art if you you could easily do be a painter you could go painting you could, anything like that releases endorphins in your brain and it soothes the other part of your brain so it has a dramatic effect on your business life i think it has a dramatic effect on how you approach people it makes you step back slightly. So whether you're a brilliant player, a good player, or an indifferent player, I don't think it matters in this scenario. People like me are playing because we enjoy it, we get something out of it, we get something out of the people we play with. If you get better, that's a bonus. <laughs> but it's not It's not the be and end all. So things like Blues Can, unless Website's great, but unless they can see how it works, the written word doesn't work with them. You know, on a Friday morning when they come along, you can see some terrified people. By Friday afternoon, they can't believe the environment they're in. And by the end of two days, they're different. They're a different person to how they've come in. Exactly. They're more relaxed. But, it, but it's how you put that across. It, it's an alternative medicine in a way. It's yeah. a th it is a therapy. Yeah, it is. Um, so it's so a very is, valuable. Because you've, you've, there's a lot of things you've said there. I mean, let's go back to what you said before about, uh, you know, getting on somebody's wavelength in order for mm. you to do it from an archi you know, from yeah. architecture. You see, I, I think that is exactly the scenario that happens with teachers and teachers okay. musical instruments. That if you don't get on with the person that's going to have a lesson with you, you may as well say that you're not the person for the to have you know as the teacher. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> and you know that's always tricky when you start off, isn't it? Because it's like, well, that's you're giving your work away. 
Yes. But I do think you have to do that because I've always thought that, like, like you're saying, um, if you're actually going to work with somebody, whether they they've come to you for some advice um, about architecture and you know design for the you know mm. architecture for the house or whatever, you've got to be able to sort of read their mind somehow because you're not going to end up with the thing that they want. Otherwise. No, you're not. But the same thing happens with music because obviously my approach to teaching is that somebody will come along. You know, if I got 10 people turning up for lessons, out of those 10 people, somebody might become a songwriter, somebody else might become a bass player, somebody might become an acoustic guitar player. And I don't know what those no. people, what they're going to be, because it's up to them. It's not for me to say. It's for me to actually encourage what I discover about them, what they discover in themselves. Um, mm. so you can't, but, you know, I notice a lot of teachers that seem to have a, a sort of a, a philosophy about what it is that they're going to do. And, you know, as if they're going to bestow their greatness upon, yes. you know, somebody. So, you know, with architecture, you're going to see, you know, it will be a similar. It's a similar thing. Yeah, bestows their sort of great architectural skills upon somebody's house, which is not exactly what people want, is it? No, because what sometimes happens with some practices is this is what we do. This is what I'm going to give you. Exactly. Uh, no, no, this is what we're going to give you. But the other side is what people want and what people need are two different things as well. Yes. They come with a very, they, they'll come to you with a very prescriptive view, right, we need X, X and X. And we, so we need to extend our house to do this and do. And it might not always be the way. So I say, well, part of the initial process is, is, is to look at how you've come to this conclusion and see Yes. What the alternatives are, even if we come back to the same point, it doesn't matter. No, that's right. Because it could be that we can fulfil all their needs within a building without extending it, mm. just saving them a shed load of money. Yeah. Um, but that's that's the skill. Yeah. And it's it's the same with you with your teaching. Someone will come to you. I want to do this, this, and this. Well, just okay, fine. But have you thought about it? let's let's go down this route? to do it and you might actually discover something else you never thought mm. you would that's right and i think you're quite right if you you go to a music and i remember going to music teachers totally prescribed method of doing it. you will do it like this you will learn this today you will learn this by the time you come back next week yeah now that's not a creative process no it's not no no it's not exactly so that's I thought that was an interesting point you, you were saying there. So that's something I think that's you've raised, which I think is important for a lot of people. Because apart from apart from teaching, that's just as true about gigging and all the rest of it. That yes. It's, it's about having some rapport with the person that's booking you in order that you know they end up getting something along the lines of what they that yes fitting for them. Um, the other thing. That, in what you were saying, um, in fact, well, I'll, I'll come back to those later. But I was thinking yeah, sure. interested in about when you when you set up and started. Mm. Um, <clears throat> what you mentioned that your motivator was was that you weren't really you were working for somebody else and, and mm. it wasn't really doing. You know, you weren't sort of fulfilling elements about your own artistic mm. stuff. Was there anything else there that you sort of looked at that you thought, actually, I could do this better from the customer point of view if I did it on my own? Yes, yes, because I experienced working with clients as, as, a, as a young architect with another practice. And one of the things that made me change, I was designing something and the, the partner I was working for in the practice didn't like it, thought it was ridiculous and silly client liked it we built it and it won an award uh, and the partner put his name on it and didn't tell me about it and went to receive the award uh, okay <laughs> I, and i thought from that moment onwards i would never ever treat anybody like that no i would never and it changed my thought process of how how you should treat people and how you should do things and from that moment i thought the only way i'm going to do that yeah. It's actually worked for myself. 
Um, on day one, I'd, I set up. They were in the days of drawing boards and ink pens, and uh, not even a fax machine. And I sat there on day one for a job, and I didn't have a thing to do. And the phone went, and it was someone giving me a job that I'd worked for in the, in the other practice. And he said, "I saw you were unhappy there. You always really helped me out, and did. And I didn't like the partner you were working for, but so you can have all my work now." And that's how I got my that's first amazing. job. Now, that was because you value the people that you're working with. You well, treat it's them. Because I've got a story similar to that. Um, in that when I started, well, I, you know, I, I, mm. to cut a very long story short, I, I was sort of working towards um, becoming sort of a professional player by gradually moving away from an employed work. Yes. And I um, I got on some government scheme to sort of get me started. And then I contacted my old classical guitar teacher and explained what I was doing. And I said, have you got any advice for me as a teacher? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, yeah, he, you know, he, he said a couple of things. And then he said, but I've got a waiting list so you can have all of them. So that was like, I didn't, you know, that wasn't my intention to ring him up and say, look, give us, no, give us some, give us some work. work. Yeah. But <clears throat> it was the fact that, you know, this was somebody that knew who I was, and knew, mm. you know, what I could do, and was quite happy to pass a load of pupils on, mm. which I was, you know, incredibly grateful for. But it's that single moment in time that changes it is. things. It is, and those things don't ever happen unless you take a risk, of course. No, no, no they don't. They don't. You know, so it's um, quite, it's quite it's, And also, I, you know, had the support of my partner, my wife. And to have that support is pretty necessary when you're yeah. dealing with a business. Um, well, I think that is really, really important from, yeah, a starting a business and also doing something artistic because it's mm. exactly the same. If you've got somebody who doesn't like you playing the guitar or playing the drums or something, you, you've got a real problem, haven't you? You've got a problem, yeah. You've yeah, got, especially if that's yeah. what, what it is that you want to do. You know? Yeah, exactly. You're on a non-starter, really. Mm. So um, that, that's an interesting point. Um, so what uh, you, you, you pointed out a few things that you was you saw as the sort of you know similar things with the um, with Blues Camp with Mm. people coming in and selling an idea and how difficult that is and I think that is a problem artistically yeah it is isn't it? being able to to put an idea across to people that they can they can see your vision mm. well as, as you know we, we you know people have contacted us and want a blow by blow what we're doing every hour what a blues camp yeah oh yeah and, my god and yeah, well, as soon as somebody does that, you realise they're not the right person. They're not the right, right people because it's, um, you know, it's an it's but, a sort of a, an accountancy style, you know, it's almost like drawing by numbers, isn't it? Painting yeah, by numbers, is. sort of thing, which is ridiculous. And of course, when you look at it from that point of view, imagine somebody turning up to see Picasso and saying, "Okay, so what colour goes where then?" Type yeah. Of thing. You know, where are the numbers to tell me what colour? Yes. Goes? Playing music um, by numbers. Yeah, exactly. It's um, you just realise that they are so far down the the track of no return that there's no point in even starting. No, really. no, there it's, isn't because it would take them a week to get back out of it again. So yeah. that's really interesting. And if you see the people that come back year after year, and you sometimes I think, why why are you coming back? And the reason is, I think, a there's a there's a certain camaraderie when yeah. you get groups of people together, yeah. And it's age irrelevant. It doesn't matter how old they are, yeah. Because you don't get what I've seen with blues companies. You don't get cliques or segregation into age groups. You get everyone learning off each other and respecting each other's point of view. Uh -huh. We we don't really suffer with. Um, there's been one or two with people falling out or anything. They're, when you leave them to their devices, it's really interesting 
as a human study how because you expect the youngsters to go off together and you expect everyone else to go off together but that, that doesn't happen no no it doesn't. i can't think of any other scenario no where it works like that no. and i think that's really interesting because they've got a common goal so what and i think having say, a common goal is the thing what, what would you say then from your experience of actually employing people mm. as, as architects mm. to do a job in a practice what would you say that you've sort of learned from that experience with people? I think certainly depending on the size of practice, if, if you're a practice with 200 people, then it's not quite so relevant. But when you're, when you're a small practice, if you've got, say, eight architects, they've all got the same qualification, they've all, all got the same abilities, you're choosing them on how you think they will fit as human beings in your family now i use the fam the word family as a, a generic thing because i think you you treat them as a family you know each one is different each one's you know for the one of the better where your child in a way and how you deal with one person not to say how you deal with another but they've they've all got their expertise and they all have to get you only need one or two and i've had it a couple of times that don't buy into the getting the same philosophy yeah. It doesn't matter how good they are. No, it's going to destroy it. So you you got to. Well, we did out. actually have an experience about this with Blues Camp in the very early. Yes. Um, because I think generally what happens is when you when you're quite empathetic with people, mm. you get quite good at reading people's characters. You do. So yeah. You tend to be quite good. At judging people but occasionally there will be somebody that doesn't quite it doesn't quite work with no it takes you by surprise and yeah, it's, and we, yeah. I know that, you know for the people that are listening to this um, mm. we actually had a situation where we had two people because one person got another person involved and they they just didn't get what it was that we were doing no very much that they needed their hands held and everything mm. we have mm. and then there was this sort of slightly sort of sniping type thing where people were trying to you know usurp their position yes yeah, so, i mean that that's always very interesting because the element of that is jealousy why do people yeah, want to, to you and not me you know that, it's not it's, all, it's not exactly like we order people around no um but it's this idea that you know well because it's not written in triplicate then you don't really know what you're doing sort of thing which is mm. far from the, case because really it's a case of reading people and, and working from what it is that people bring in so mm. you know exactly what you're doing mm. um but in those instances maybe you can sort of mention a little bit about how how you feel if you know say for obviously the people that are listening to this will be probably involved in a band or they mm. might be running a studio or a teaching mm. practice or something where they've got somebody in there that's problematic um, they might not be, you know, there may not be anything untoward in their behaviour from the point of view that they're, mm. you know, they've got their hands in the till type of thing. Cause no, that's, sure. That's often easy to deal with. because That's very easy to deal with because it's tangible. Exactly. It's an action what's, that what's, you can deal with. What would you say from your experience, Mark, about dealing with people that don't... Um, you know, from a f putting it in your terms, the family. Mm. Don't buy into it. Mm. I think one of the ways that I think you can intuitively do it, you you can carry on in the way with the rest of the family, and sometimes they come to their own conclusion that it's not working for them either. Yes. And that's a better way to resolve that scenario because if it becomes evident that it's not working for them, because there's always two sides to a story. It doesn't mean to say they're bad people. It just doesn't work in this scenario. And if you can come to a mutual way of saying, and I've had this scenario by saying to somebody, I don't, don't think this is working here. It's just not working. And then saying, no, I know what you mean. It's not working for me either. And that was after a period of time. 
and it became evident to them it wasn't working either but they didn't know how to handle it so you have to bring it to a, a conclusion yeah and it's much better to bring it to a mutual conclusion than yeah. it is to saying we don't want you here anymore <clears throat> yeah exactly. that this empowers them and makes it's like cornering a rat it, it as soon as you disempower somebody and make them feel then it becomes a difficult operation if they still feel they've got something but it's not working in that scenario and they can leave with their head high or change something yeah. then that's the best solution i, yeah. I think yeah uh, nine times out of ten i think you 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 can achieve that yeah because at the same time if you're an empathetic person you, you're, you're trying to see it from their point of view as well yeah it's nothing's ever one-sided no one's ever 100 percent right there's always good and bad hmm. and it you 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 have and if if they don't work if they don't gel together then it's sensible for all parties and it's the same in a band if, if if you've got someone that you know says the day before a gig oh sorry i can't make it or you know you you have to find a mechanism. I mean, sometimes the best thing is to say, well, I think you better go. But you can usually make, they can come to their own conclusion about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and we've had that, so. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, anybody who's listening to this and has played in bands for long enough realises that, you know, you, you start to deal with people's personalities and, and then you realise that, oh, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> Sometimes I've always found that it's never been about somebody's playing ability. Beyond no, it's not. No. Beyond a certain point, because it's actually about it's entirely about their personality, because really, you know, the way I, I look at this is music is always about what people bring to it. Yeah. Not about how technical somebody is because as far as I'm concerned that's got nothing to do with music that's just technical mm. and there must be an element of that with with architecture yes yeah, sure. technically yeah. brilliant you know in their sort of ideas from a technical point of view mm. but when it comes to the artistic aspect the vision they might not have that at all no that's right I'm, I'm guessing um, you, I, don't, I don't know but I'm just and a, a, a lot, a lot of them don't. So they, in a bigger practice, they'll fit into a different slot. Mm. But in a small practice, you've got to be all things to everybody. You've yeah. got to be able to do the whole package. Yeah. And if part of that is missing, then it's a very difficult thing for them to yeah. sit in that fold. They'd be better in a team of ten doing a technical aspect of a bigger building, because they, they, they can focus on that. They're happy with that. Mm. And so it's, it's finding the right place for people. Everyone's got a place somewhere. Yeah. Um, and if, if you're in a band scenario, for instance, and the band are just going through the motions of playing, the audience know that. Yeah, yeah. The audience, true. the audience see you as a happy band and an interactive band. They'll enjoy it as well at the same time. Well, Stay with design design. That's a question here. Would you say that's true of a business that if somebody comes in to have a meeting with you? Mm. Would you say that's evident if a business has got a good vibe that people pick that up? Yes, without a doubt, without a doubt. And I think that people then feel, hey, you know, these guys work together. They they understand me. Yes, it does. Even if it's psychologically and they don't, people don't realise it. It goes into the psyche. Yeah. That they're going to a happy place, not a place that deals out, you know, on a conveyor belt. No, right. Um, you, you know, okay, you, you have some businesses that are pretty difficult to do, like lawyers and accountants is perhaps, uh, I'm, and I'm generalising, I mean, I go into my lawyers and they're, they're a pretty friendly bunch. But generally, because of the sort of work they do, it's a very much do this, then you do that, and then you do that, and that's it. Yeah. Job. My job is finished. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whereas that's in any creative business, it isn't. Well, that's an interesting point, because one of the things that I've been writing about, and we've actually talked about this anyway, is the effect that, uh, you know, technology, computers, mm. algorithms are going to have on businesses that 
always up till now thought they were safe. Hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, we're probably, well, we are, I'm, I'm convinced that we are. We're entering a period of time where professional jobs could be seriously under threat because of computers, you know, because of yes. the way the technology works. But not if there isn't a defined outcome. So, you know, if it's a bit like this is a building that you could sort of buy off the shelf type architecture. Yeah. You've got a problem because there's an outcome that a, mm. a computer could go do X, Y and Z, blah, de, blah, de, blah. And there, voila, here it is. Right. Mm. The design is obvious. But if it, it actually requires some human input, um, you know, a creative input, the, the computer can't do that. No. Because the outcome is not defined. Well, yeah, that's that's really interesting. I always make an analogy of a, and this may sound silly, of a sat nav. You want to go from A to B. When in a design, you want to go to A to B. In a music, you want to go to A to B. But people that people have never used a map, a mind, you know, a map, and I'll talk about map is mind mapping anything like that. A map to get to A to B. Don't know where they've been to get there. Yes. If you use a sat nav, you've got to be, but you tell me how you got there. Yes. They'll use, anyone yeah, who uses exactly. a sat nav all the time has to use that sat nav. doesn't matter how many times they've traveled there. No. It's they don't know country. how they've got there. Well, it's interesting. Actually, and knowing how you get same, there. I use that same analogy about maps. I think you've heard me do this anyway. Yeah. Now, you know, scales and chords and everything, they're mm. only maps. Yes, you they know, are. Because yeah. a map doesn't actually... Um, it only, it only, um, it doesn't give you reality. It only gives you a way of navigating mm. reality. But of course, then the problem is with a sat nav is that you only arrive at a point. Yes. You know? So um, it's almost like saying, well, you didn't actually have to learn any of the scales of chords. You just managed to get to this thing, and you know you're playing something that has absolutely no reason or no exactly exactly from anything outside of that you know, piece of music or whatever. Mm. And I think the the process of arriving is is as important as arriving. Yeah, well, that's right. It's the journey, isn't it? The journey. And it's it's so, I, I think it's an obvious thing. And, and uh, in the office, I think uh, I'm a bit of a dinosaur because I like maps still. But I said, you know, I know exactly where I'm going if I've read a map. And you have to do it once. Yeah. It maps in my brain then. Yeah. And you use that. Perhaps I don't want them quite to go to the same place, but I know a route to get there. Yeah, exactly. And that's where the danger lies in technology a lot of the time. Yeah. If you put in rubbish, you get out of rubbish as well. Well, it's the fact that there's no. I got to put this. Technology has a habit of doing this. It actually. It, it actually dominates the way you think. Mm. You know, it starts off as being a tool for you to use yes. to accomplish what you mm. think. And then the danger is then it possesses you and then it, it starts to modify the way you think. Good servant, bad master. Exactly, exactly. So it, it is, you know, and I've, I've, I've made mention of people like Hendrix. Mm. Of you that When the pedals first arrived with Hendrix, <laughs> the wah wah and the, you know, the fast face and everything, Hendrix made those sounds fit what he had in his head. And then, yeah. of course, the next people that buy those pedals are buying those pedals because they want to sound like Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. So immediately, the, the technology starts to, to rule you. Mm. And, and there's a problem with, you know, a sat nav, it, it, you know, in this. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the same would go for everything else. So the thing is, going back to the point that we were making, mm. if you don't have a specific outcome that's defined, then, you know, you have a way of surviving in an age where everything is so predetermined. Mm. Um, there's no, somebody actually made the point of saying, well, this, you know, you've got to make room for miracles. You know, <laughs> the thing that you, that, that sort of flips 
reality around mm. and defies logic. Yeah. And you see that, I would say you see that a lot in, in art mm. and music, how somebody could suddenly buck all the trends and become incredibly successful. Mm. or just the fact that they are good at doing what they do mm. and also people who are entrepreneurs yeah who have a trend and can compete against massive companies out of their kitchen you know off yeah. the kitchen table, you know and it, and in a way that doesn't make sense no it doesn't and that's why it works <laughs> and that's why i mean we've got to have the potential for miracles, you mm. know, and I mean that in the most sort of open. Yes. And, you yeah. Know. But it's that sort of thing. Well, that should not happen. That statistically cannot happen. And yet it does. Mm. And and that happens all of the time. Yeah. With people who succeed doing something artistically, where they happen to be in quote the right place at the right time or mm. whatever it is, or they just happen to get the lucky phone call. Mm on the day you know like you're saying mm. on day one of running a new yeah business, yeah, it's, you get yeah. A call that gives yeah. you a load of work you yeah. know and that's uh, it you're off and running then exactly i'm gonna lose power in a minute right okay well we're actually getting to a point we, we got a good sort of 45 minutes down so that's really cool so just before you go any thoughts of what would be good for people if they're you know from a running a business entrepreneurial perspective that they could do in, in terms of how they set up possibly i think i think you've you, you've got to have a goal where you want to go to but you mustn't be prescriptive about the route you yeah. take always listen to people always if you're in a meeting be the last person to speak right and not that's the first good. that's good yeah because you will then gain the information from other people and you will not preempt other people's thoughts and uh that's what gandhi used to do yes. always be the last to speak and don't be afraid to ask questions or ask for help or ask for knowledge of people who have done it before yeah and don't overstretch yourself don't I've seen a lot of people start businesses or small businesses that spend a lot of money yeah. that they don't need to to do it. But but the primary thing is people, communication. Communication is everything. We we are losing everything. People think everything should be communicated by uh, computer now and digital. There's still you you don't. It doesn't compensate for meeting people, for talking to them, for seeing them, for seeing how their 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 body language is and everything else. And we're losing the art of doing that. And I think that's a great mistake. And I think anyone that's got that ability to talk to people is one of the primary things to have as well. But you need a good idea, you need support, and you need support from your people around you then you'll make it work, I think. Um, if the idea is good enough, if the business is good enough, you don't need to throw money at it. It will, no, it will generate totally, itself. I totally agree with you, actually, um, because there's always this idea that, you know, if you're going to be a, you know, a guitar teacher or whatever, you need a studio. What yes. What a studio for, you know, like recording studio. I mean, it's like you, what you need is a guitar and a chair and a music stand, two chairs and a music stand and some paper. Yes. And that's it. You know, paper? You know. Paper and a pen? My exactly. Goodness. No, seriously, that is yeah, it. No. It's like Alan Sugar's thing, you know. Do you know how to start a business? You have a piece of paper and a piece yeah. of paper and a pencil and you you two columns, one money coming in, one money going out. Mm. Yeah. If if the one going out's more than the one coming in, you've got a problem. Yeah, exactly. And always have I mean this is I know it's what you I know, but write everything down. Doesn't matter what yeah. it is. Write people yeah. what people say. Yeah, because yeah. old sayings that have been going around for years and years have got foundations somewhere. They're there for a reason. Yeah, yeah. Because that it's happened. Um, and you know, and be enthusiastic about what you want to do. People feed off enthusiasm. Yeah. People feed off enthusiasm. We've seen it at a blues camp. Mm. Look how enthusiasm made 
people that you thought came in thinking they couldn't play anything, suddenly they're with people that are enthusiastic and it's non-judgmental. No. Don't be judgmental about things. Just, you know, just be, if you like. No. Just and li Really, the thing is, listen to people. People that talk a lot are not necessarily the ones that are best. Mm. Listen to people, because there are some interesting people around and wise people. Certainly. Right, well, on that, that's, that's a really good note to finish on um, before you suddenly disappear. Yeah, I'm going to do it in a couple of seconds, I think. Right, OK. So it's lovely speaking to you, Mike. And you. Time and uh, yeah, see you soon. Cheers, bye. Cheers, mate. Bye. Further details about Blues Camp um, you can go and visit the website, which is www.bluescampuk.co.uk. And details of next year's Blues Camp is on there. Um, there's one running in the UK and one running in France. So until next time, speak to you then.